Pastor Matt from Church of the Good Shepherd in Grafton, West Virginia. And today we are talking about chapter 4 out of The Way Back to Mayberry by the author Joey Fan. And as we listen to chapter 4 today, it is titled Keeping the Faith. And the episode of the Andy Griffith series is the episode of Andy Forecloses. Today's scripture comes from Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. I tell you the truth, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. In the episode Andy forecloses, hard times have befallen Lester Scobie and his family. Unfortunately, Lester has recently lost his job and the family is having a hard time coming up with the rent payment. Lester, his wife Helen, and their young daughter Mary rent a house from department store owner Ben Weaver. And Ben, who is not one to show much compassion, is getting impatient. He even orders Andy to serve an eviction notice on the struggling family. Andy immediately visits the Scobie family to find out what can be done. Lester tells Andy that he is looking for work, but no one seems to be hiring. In the meantime, Helen is pitching in by taking in some extra laundry, but they just can't seem to make ends meet. Andy tells Lester not to worry, and he doesn't mention the eviction notice. He returns to the office with a plan to help the Scobies. Working together, Andy and Barney quietly raise the needed money to pay off the month's rent, $52.50. However, when Andy presents the money to Ben, he finds that the Scobies' troubles are just beginning. When Andy offers the rent money, Ben refuses to take it. Furthermore, Ben points out an obscure clause in the Scobie's contract, which states that if a payment is missed for any reason, the entire balance of the rent is due. Therefore, instead of $52.50, the Scobies now owe Ben a whopping $780. Ben makes it clear that if the Scobies can't come up with the money, they are to be evicted immediately. Andy knows that Lester and Helen don't have that kind of money, but he refuses to give up. He is determined to find a solution to this problem no matter what. Fortunately, Andy's optimism and helpful attitude are contagious. He and Barney organize a town-wide rummage sale to raise money for the Scobies, and all of Mayberry turns out in support of this worthy cause. That is, everyone but Ben Weaver. Ben is still insistent that Andy serve the foreclosure notice. Andy continues to put Ben off and even tries a few legal maneuvers of his own to avoid serving the notice, but he knows that time is running out. The more Ben pushes, the more Andy wonders if Ben really knows how heartless his actions are. Andy knows that Ben is a shrewd businessman, but he can't believe that Ben would, be actual, would actually put a family out on the street. Andy gambles and decides to use a little reverse psychology. To Ben's surprise, Andy now says that the time has come for the Scobies to leave the house. No more time, no more chances, no more feeling sorry for them. Ben enthusiastically agrees and they proceed to the Scobies' residence. When they get there, Andy is very gruff with Lester, insisting that he and his family leave now. Lester attempts to get a few things together, but Andy refuses to give him any more time. At this point, Lester and Helen are at a complete loss about what to do. They can't pay the rent. They have nowhere to go. Slowly, Ben begins to see what is really happening. The house is no longer just a structure on a valuable piece of property where he would eventually like to build a warehouse. It is a home, a home that houses a family in need, 
Andy continues to badger the Scobies to the point that Helen breaks down in tears. At this instant, Ben puts a stop to the eviction and tells the Scobies they can stay. He even offers Lester a job at his department store. As Andy and Ben are leaving, Andy gives Lester and Helen a knowing wink. Lester and Helen realize that Andy was just looking out for them all along. Lester smiles and thanks Andy for all his help. Because of Andy, Lester has a new job and his home is saved. What was once a hopeless situation is now a dream come true. During the whole ordeal, Andy was the only one that kept a positive attitude. From the first time he went to visit the Scobies, he was thinking of ways to solve their problem. When the problem suddenly became much worse, he didn't throw up his hands and quit. He just tried that much harder. And when there seemed to be no way out, he made a way out. He refused to be beaten. He refused to quit. This episode shows that difficult and challenging times will come in life. But what is more important? The challenges we face or how we face them? When I reflected on this episode, it made me think of a challenge that was handed our family a few years ago. Cancer is something that is supposed to happen to someone else. We get very uneasy talking about it, so we usually don't and just hope that it won't happen to us, <coughs> excuse me, or to our loved ones. That all changed for my family in 1992. My dad was always healthy. Growing up, I can't remember a single time when he had to miss work or anything else due to illness. Even after he had his wisdom teeth taken out later in life, he was up and moving around when people half his age would still be in bed. He was the last person anyone would think would ever get sick, but he did. My dad was diagnosed with colon cancer, and the initial prospects were not good. The tumor was too large to operate on, so radiation and chemotherapy treatments were the only course of action. As you can imagine, this situation had a profound effect on our family. It caused us to realize how quickly our lives can change and that we are not guaranteed good health forever. However, this particular situation made me realize something else. When something bad happens to you, you have a choice. You can react with hopelessness and bitterness and feel sorry for yourself, or you can make the best of it, try to learn from it, and maybe even use your experience to help others. My dad did not panic. Neither did he fall into a state of deep depression or give up. He approached the situation with as much optimism as possible. During the initial treatments, I never heard him complain or gripe about how unfair his situation was. He always had a good attitude and went on with his life the best he could. At the end of the treatments, he did receive some good news. The tumor had shrunk and the doctors were confident that they could go in and operate with some degree of success. I remember the feeling of helplessness while waiting during the operation, which took much longer than the doctors originally anticipated. There were some complications, and he would spend several months recovering, but the surgery was considered successful. I still remember spending time with my dad a few days after that initial surgery, even after all he had been through and knowing that he would face many more months of recovery, you would never know that anything was wrong. His mood and outlook on life were the same. He refused to let this life-threatening situation get him down. It has been more than seven years since my dad was diagnosed with cancer. His oncologist recently told him that he doesn't need to see my dad again because the chances of the cancer's return are so, so low. We are all thankful for his recovery, and I know this situation has given us a greater appreciation of the time we do have together. But this situation also taught me something else. I've learned that bad things will happen to us in this life, but the issue 
is not the tragedy itself, it's how we respond. To some extent, we do have a choice. We can choose to get bitter or to get better. My dad is a great example of how to get better. Thank you. Hope you are doing well. Hope you are enjoying the chapters that I'm reading and we're thinking about and talking about. Uh, until next time, take care.